Chapter 11, Celestials Time waits for no one. I stayed longer with the Zenorians than planned, but that didn't matter. The oldest Zenorian, called Zona, was 187 when I first met them on Lehan. The Zenorians can live up to 800 to 900 years. Some of the more powerful ones can live even a bit longer. I didn't realize that time was passing as I lived among them. But one day, I was called to Zona's quarters and found him rather sickly about to pass away. Then it came to me that I was immortal and that time didn't mean anything to me, but to those who were close to me, it did. What are you doing, Zona? You won't kick the bucket, will you? I try to jest with him, and it works somewhat. No kicking, I will do. Passing away, though, I will. Zona tells me with a smile. I taught the Zenorians different languages over the years, among other things. But sarcasm and figure of speech are still hard for them. I guess they'll learn about that. T wish you a safe journey, Zona. I tell him as I feel his life force dying out. He dies with a smile on his face, and I can tell that he seems to have enjoyed his life at least. I stay with him for a while longer, and then stand up and leave the place. I realize that I have already stayed for longer than I had planned, and it is time to leave again. But going right away, when their oldest family member dies, is not a nice thing to do. But I will slowly distance myself again and observe them. They have connected to the planet very well, and it is almost as if they originated from it so they don't really need my help anymore. I'm glad. I look at the Zenorians from afar and smile. I have made sure that they can live peacefully from now on. And as long as no empire comes soon, which it won't, then they will have all the time in the galaxy to progress and advance their strength. I walk away and then activate a function telepathically using the Force. The explorer understands and in front of me, a white portal appears, giving me a view of my ship on the other side. After one last look, I walk through the portal. I used the past 700 plus years to continue my technological research and manage to create portal travel. My scientific achievements are piling up, but it doesn't really matter in the long run. Apart from that, I also continued my training in the Force and listened to what it had to tell me. I can confidently say that there is no one I know of who is as powerful as I am in the Force neither now nor in the future. I can't move a planet yet, but I can move the explorer as if it were a pebble under normal gravity at the moment. I believe it is time for me to go and begin with my next project to create a planet. I have mapped out a very big part of the galaxy, and from what I have seen, I believe that it is best if I start now. I have a lot of things planned, and if I start now, I calculate that it will take me roughly a thousand years. I could also make this longer or shorter, depending on how I want to create the planet. I could guide evolution from the very beginning and then influence it to the way I want it to. Or I could simply collect different species to place them there. Food for thought. I'm on the central computer and am going over most of the new information my probes are gathering and sending here. I have lived through a lot of this galaxy's history. Using the specially created force-sensitive drones, I can have them record a lot of things and have them send everything they record back to the main hub where I am sorting everything out. I have the time, so why not use it for this? The explorer is suddenly being pulled by a foreign force. I sense it immediately and try to find the origin of this force. Hmm? Why are you doing this? No, it's not you, is it? Someone is using you. Force users? At this time, let me check. I say out loud as I communicate with the force. Someone is using the force to pull, or more like guide, the explorer. This would never happen if I didn't allow it to. So I focus for a moment and spread my senses to follow the scent of the person using the force. Then I see it. The one guiding and manipulating my dear explorer is an old man? Ah, I see. An old man indeed, but someone who believes himself to be more than he is. So that's how it is. And here I thought they were some sort of reincarnations of the Force similar to Anakin. But no, they are simply the oldest Force users, if I wouldn't exist. And their powers got amplified a lot later. They took the easy way. Well, Explorer, let it happen. It might be interesting to see what they want now that they gained a power-up. I say with a smile. I can feel the silence of the Force. It seems it has no thoughts on the matter and just goes along with whatever I wish. 
I notice that is something it has done all the time in the last few millennia. Peculiar. We followed the trail for a week until we reached a peculiar planet that felt strong in the force. Very strong. I remember this planet from the very beginning of my travels. It is interesting for the strong connection it has to the force. And now, it seems that this powerful connection resulted in two force nexus being created. I don't like such a nexus. Yes, it is a very quick way to gain tremendous amounts of power, but it is unnatural and useless for me. If I grow that powerful in an instant, what would I do for the rest of my life? Another negative point is that using such a force nexus to gain power not only gives you power, but it also gives you a limit. You won't ever be able to grow beyond the amount of power you gain. And for someone like me, who is immortal and doesn't like limits, this is a very big no. I stop the explorer and activate a portal that brings me to the planet's surface. I think this might be interesting and I'm looking forward to it. The portal opens and I walk through. But before I do that, I give the explorer some instructions first. Explorer, activate all of the Salamir replicants against foreign influence to protect yourself. Also, make sure to be ready for extraction should the planet implode or something like that. I say, and then walk through. Isalamir. Isalamiri are lizard-like tree dwellers I found. They are about 50 centimeters in length and native to the planet Mirker. These salamander-like creatures are impressive for the very particular ability they have. Adult Isalamiri grow up to 50 centimeters and hatch their young from bubble-like eggs. They sink their claws into the Olbio trees on which they live and draw nutrients. It is very difficult to remove a salamir from its tree without killing it, although I naturally found a way by channeling the force through them. This is impressive, and we will find out why in a moment. I researched the salamiri and their biology and managed to recreate their biological ability. But what is their ability? The salamiri have the ability to repel the force by creating a force-neutral bubble. This ability evolved in response to predation by the force-sensitive Vornskers, which I also found and researched on Merkur. This is an amazing ability to have. I knew that I wanted this ability for defense on the Explorer, and after working on it for a while, I managed to replicate it. I created a special coating in between the different Forcium layers on the Explorer. This allows the Explorer and everyone inside to remain safely inside the Salamiri's force repelling bubble. Normally I have it deactivated, but in moments like these and especially in the future, I will have it activated most of the time. Isalamiri do not actually negate the force. Since all existence was infused with force energy, this would not be possible. Everything that is alive has the force flowing inside it. Rather, they project a bubble inside, which users are unable to exert any influence over the force. A single bubble measured up to 10 meters in diameter, large groups of Yisalamiri can extend their collective bubble by kilometers, but only in great numbers. I step out of the portal and look around. I can sense three presences on the planet and slowly make my way towards them. I look around the planet and enjoy the flora and fauna. I can see that there are indeed two distinct sides about the force here. The dark side and the light side are both present here in equal amounts. I reach down and put my palm on the earth. I close my eyes for about 20 seconds and then stand up again. So that's how it is, good to know. I learned this particular skill a while back. The Force told me that for my project of creating a giant library, I would have to know about history when even I wasn't around yet. That's why she taught me how to see or relive what the Force saw at a certain place or in a certain object. A weaker variation of this is called psychometry. Force psychometry is the ability to acquire about events or individuals from an object. My version is more in-depth as I can see what the Force saw and know what the Force knows. An instrumental skill indeed. On my travels across the jungle planet, I come across a small pool and a font which have a strong connection to the Force. I use psychometry on both the pool and the font to gain information. Then I finally reach the monastery where I sense the old man residing. I walk in without care and then come face to face with him. Picture, he looked old already. To think that he had the power to keep his children in check is impressive, but I know that his children's strength flowed through him as they were directly tied together. You came, 
I have foreseen you coming here, he says. You tried to manipulate my spaceship to come here. You have foreseen nothing. I reply to him and have my arms locked behind my back. Something I started a few centuries ago. I think it's something that is connected to my rising power. I am not arrogant, but it just happened for some reason. T. Admit, I wanted to meet you. I believe you are the one who is supposed to be here. When I found out about you, I could feel it and knew that you were the one. The one? The one who does what? I ask. The one who will learn from me and then one day become my successor. You see me and my children are celestials of the force. We have been alive for many millennia. My daughter and my son are both representations of the dark and light side of the force, and it is my job to keep the balance between them, or the galaxy will become chaotic. Learn from you, eh? Thank you, but I already have a teacher, much better than you. T. See that you don't think much of me. Why would I? You haven't achieved anything on your own. The power you wield is granted to you by the connection between you and your children. You were given everything and didn't work for anything, so don't lie to me, for 1 a.m. much older than you. Chapter 12. Know Your Place Older? You are older than us? Hoo hoo, that's amusing, young one. Even if you use the force to extend your life and keep your youthful appearance, you can't possibly be my age, much less older than me. Uh, what do you want? Not mysterious, two voices talking, already white-haired old man. To want you to learn the truth about who you really are, one that maybe you have known all along, one you must believe in order to fulfill your destiny. T. Wonder, Yasel, whether I will also start to speak in useless riddles like you one day? Yeah, I think not. If you use riddles, at least make them informative and a useful experience for me. Haven't you two children? Didn't you teach them anything? Or is that the reason they both disobeyed you? I ask him. What? What do you know of this? Eh, never mind that. So what now? It is getting late. You will be my guest tonight. He says and leads me to some rooms where I am supposed to sleep. I find this little charade amusing. I'll play along. It has been never since I experienced this. Funny. Instead of sleeping, I begin to meditate as I usually do. Sleep is something that I no longer need. So to get the time over with, I meditate and rather listen to the force telling me new things. However, during the night, someone touches me, or tries to. Some time ago, I don't know when this started, the concentration of force energy inside and around me has started to become so much that it affects the surroundings when I don't control it. During meditation, some of it coats around me and forms a sort of force barrier. However, it is more of a force bubble since the force is highly concentrated all around me in a ball-like shape and not just a barrier. So when this person wanted to touch me, he was repelled by the force surrounding me. Wake up, my child. I must tell you a secret. The voice of a woman says, and I open my eyes. I see a woman standing in front of me with a calm and gentle smile on her face. My expression doesn't change, and I even tilt my head. I rise from my floating position until I stand upright. Who is this supposed to be? It is me, dear, your mother. The woman says and spreads her arms as if to invite me to hug her or something like that. My brain stops for a second and I think back. And then, T got nothing. Don't you recognize me? Don't you recognize your own mother? Has my baby boy forgotten about me? The woman asks me. T don't forget anything, but I have never met someone who looks like this. Oh, think I understand. You're my mother, as in my mother in this life. Haha, ha, I get it now. All right, back to the script. Ab, oh yes, shouldn't you be dead or something? I ask, totally nailing my act. I feel a buzz from the force telling me that it disapproves. Eh, what do you know? I'm a good actor. Again, the buzzing from the force. I guess I wasn't as convincing as I thought. Nothing ever truly dies, my son. I have a secret to tell you. The woman says, Nah. Ev, wait, no, no. But my son, it is imperative that you... Every time someone asks me whether I want to know a secret, I say no thank you and haven't regretted it yet. So why would I start now? Whatever I need to know, I will be taught by someone who speaks the truth. And you lie the moment you open your mouth. I mean, come on, didn't you do your homework? I don't even know this woman. How am I supposed to feel something if I don't know her? I don't want to be picky, but as far as mysterious manipulations are concerned, you still have a lot to learn. Everything you have done, 
everything you have known has led you here. So you're just going to continue this charade? I thought we already went over the fact that this person you are showing me is long dead. And you blame yourself. Your training and research all these years have served you well, but you are more than a researcher and a philanthropist helping other races. Tell me, where is your pain so I might take it away? Why would I blame myself and why would I carry any pain with me? T can feel it. You are in pain about the death of your late Wichike. He couldn't finish his sentence as I began to porp, force choke him and raise him into the air while my arms were still behind my back. Yer yar, you should know your place, boy. Before I show it to you, I believe that is quite enough. Feelings such as pain, sadness, hate, passion, and anger are all a natural part of life. It is more than normal that I would miss my wife and kids, considering how old I am. However, I have made peace with these things. It is not useful to carry any luggage with me in my lives. Now be gone, boy. I say and yeet his body through the wall and out of the room at very high speeds. Sk teenagers. I decide to leave the room after this. I see no reason to continue this any longer. It was funny for a while, but these long pauses in between, they might work on someone young, but now for me, and I have no complex about the death of my loved ones, so that won't work either. I make my way back to the place where the wrinkly old man is kneeling on the ground. Cannot sleep, he asks me. To was never asleep to begin with. No? Then meditation? Indeed. Your offspring has thought is smart to wake me, though. You never taught your seedlings any manners, did you? Ah, my son, I suspect. He can take many forms. The shapes we embody are merely a reflection of the life force around us. You carry a great sadness in your heart. Is that truly what you feel, or is it what you want me to think you feel? Because there is no sadness in my heart whatsoever. So if you want to play this game, you should try harder. My children and I can manipulate the force like no other. Therefore, it was necessary to withdraw from the temporal world and live here as anchorites. T agree with you. You do indeed manipulate the force like no other. And I am unhappy about that. Manipulating the force means taking something from the force. And no one has ever taken more from it than your children have. We never took anything from the force. But you did. Your son had an affinity to the dark side of the force, and your daughter to the light side. And their power flowed through you, as you three were connected together. For a time, you lived together in peace and harmony. You told them never to drink from the font of power, or bathe in the pool of knowledge. However, your son, in defiance of you, drank from the font of power, an act that corrupted his nature and recreated him as a sort of essence of the dark side. At least that is what you believe. And to an extent, that is indeed the case. The fall of your one was swiftly followed by your daughter's rebirth as your son's opposite, a symbol of the light side, the result of her bathing in the pool of knowledge, also in defiance of your will. As with the light and the darkness, the two siblings developed a rivalry and competed against one another for dominance, causing them both to divide this planet between their respective dominions. Horrified by your family's descent into discord, you became the balance between them yourself through your attempts to curb the growing conflict between your wayward offspring. I revealed their secrets and their true origin. How do you know all this? Who are you? The two voices from the father became louder and he tried to intimidate me and pressure me with the force, but that wouldn't work on me. Tam myself, every few millennia, I appear as someone else, but I stay the same. I am the listener, the observer, the first one, and the one who remains, for I will see the end if I so wish. Too much light and dark will destroy the life in the universe as you know it. I am the one who controls my children. I am important and necessary. Not really. There is a much simpler way to solve that problem. Isn't there? I ask him. How would you know such secrets? To already told you, 1 am much older than you, and even though you think you know the Force, you do not. A. As you stated, you manipulate the Force, but you don't know it. There is a fundamental difference. Preposterous, he says, and then begins to use the power of the Force to pressure me. But once again it didn't do much. I could feel his power was great, but nothing to be proud of all things considered. I didn't move from my spot and simply let him play around. 
When he saw the floor and the room in general cracked and shook, but I didn't, he stopped. So it is true. You are the chosen one. Oh my, this is stupid. You believe it to be Amoth? T don't care about it. You must. Must nothing. I do what I want. That is my freedom. You don't get to decide anything. Then you will have to die, for you have seen us and might spread this knowledge. He says and then extends his hand at me. I could feel the pressure building on me as he used the force to try and crush me fully. This time, he got a reaction out of me. I was sick of these games. I am just about to retaliate when the force decides to do it for me. A powerful wave permeates the surroundings coming from me and throws the old man's control off. Then he is suddenly force choked and his body slowly rises into the air. I watch this happen in amusement and surprise. The force itself has retaliated without me saying anything or making my will known. Fascinating. The doors are broken down and in come the two children, flying in their beast forms. They both screech at me and try to attack, but now I am the one doing something. I will both of them to stop, and just before they reach me, they freeze in the air. This is similar to force stasis. Both of them are frozen in space and time. I have not full control over this yet, but it is getting stronger. Then I put pressure on them. The father has been released by the force meanwhile, and I only focus on the two in front of me. They begin to screech again as the space around them is being pressed together. Using my will, I have them transform back into their humanoid forms. Then I point my hands at each of them, my right hand at the son and my left hand at the daughter, and then I release force lighting. I use force lightning imbued with the dark side on my right hand and hurt the sun with it, and I use electric discharge imbued with the light side energy and hurt the daughter with it. Both of them scream in pain, and after a while, I stop. I look at all three of them and then imbue my voice with the force again. Kneel, I say with a deep voice and their reaction is immediate. They kneel in front of me, smoking from the lightning and with their heads bent. And now you see who you truly are. Only the chosen one could tame both my children. Don't you feel your destiny? When I die, you will have to replace me. T think I told you, to kneel. I say without turning around. The pressure on him also multiplies, and he obeys the command as well, kneeling in front of me. What I is this? Please. This is serious. Take this seriously. The father says while he is struggling against my will. I narrow my eyes at him. The only matter I do not take seriously by is you three. Your words and tests bore me. Your demeanor is that of a pouty child. Stop playing those games and get down off your pedestals. Use the gifts you were so graciously given wisely. I will watch your actions, and the effects your actions have on the galaxy will show if you are worthy to live, and I will return for judgment. Chapter 13. The PBC This story follows a mix between the legends and the canon timelines. I will mix certain things and keep to canon in others, so don't get confused. A great amount of time has passed. After I put the three celestials in their place, I left their planet and continued my travels across the galaxy. I explored, researched, and advanced my personal knowledge to great heights. I guided the evolution of many species and documented all of their habits and the results of my guidance. I traveled through hyperspace and reached from the deep core to the far edge of the galaxy. I tried to follow a One Piece-esque path and visit all the planets I could. And thanks to my immortality, I believe that I managed to visit a great portion of the worlds, which were not all of them, as that wouldn't be possible. Moons, worlds, solar systems, and the entire galaxy is in constant change. Life emerges and creates new planets and life, only to then end in death with the end of the species, the entire planet, or even the solar system. Nothing ever stopped, and that was the way it was supposed to be. I used my ever-growing proficiency in psychometry to find out everything the Force knew and saw about different planets if they were no longer around. I documented everything, and thanks to my perfect memory and infinite storage, I could sort everything and create a very, very detailed timeline with hundreds of thousands of planets and what happened on them. The memory drives on the central computer on the Explorer were not infinite, so I had to narrow it down to the most important things which were going on. 
I was present when the cephalopod crustacean hybrids known as Ibliton evolved on Randorn 2. The Ibliton were a swamp creature of Randorn 2. A mollusk by nature, its shell was about 2 meters long with 3 meter long one-gene tentacles. Like many mollusks, its shell was chambered and coiled with its fleshy body protruding out. Unlike most mollusks, however, its segmented body and knife-like legs were covered by an insectoid exoskeleton. In the legend's timeline, Iblin fossils dated back to 600,000 BBY. This gave me an idea when I was in the timeline at that time. But it was only an idea. Everything could be different. I watched the Ibliton evolve. I observed their habits, their habitats, what they ate, and who their natural predators were. And in the end, I watched them go extinct. I didn't save them. I didn't help them in any way. I had changed greatly. I was still sad when they died since I had watched their race come to be and then die, but not enough to save them. I knew that my next project was to found an order. I would create an order of force users like it was meant to be in the Legends timeline. The Jade order would be founded by me. I had already decided that, and I would go through with it as soon as my current project was finished. Over the years, I continued to be reincarnated into different species. One such species was the Gel. The Gel were a species indigenous to Notron that were hypothesized by historians to have been humans. And as a small spoiler, that is indeed true, but it is also false. The irony is much bigger, and I will discuss this later. Roughly 226020 BBY, I was born to the Gel during the war with the Tong species for control of our mutual homeworld Notron. I was born close to the Great Gel, later it would be called the City of Gel. Very soon, I was taken into the army in order to fight in the war against the Tong. One day when I was 13 years old, I saw the future and knew what would happen and tried to warn my superiors. They didn't listen to me and still decided to go through with their great plan to siege the city. What was happening was this. During the war, Great Gel was seized by the Tong forces led by Riksutu the Unconquerable. However, the Tong forces took heavy losses, and so we decided to siege the city and gathered a massive force at the base of the mountain. I tried to stop the charge from happening, but I was CC, ridiculed, and even forced to attend and be one of the first to charge the city. As the sun rose, we prepared to charge. But there was only one problem. The technologically primitive species did not realize that the city, Great Gel, was built upon a volcano, so when we prepared to charge, the volcano erupted and threw our forces into chaos. The Tongs took advantage of our confusion and charged. The Tong would later commemorate the battle in the poem Da Word of Verda. When the dawn came, the Gel awakened and saw the Tongs upon the high place and were afraid, for the morning light caught the glint of helms and weapons and created phantom warriors made of dazzle and distance. But the cleverest of them were not deceived and saw how few we were. And so they assembled without haste, merry in mockery, and prepared to march. And in the high place we awaited death. When translated from the language of Mandoa, Da Word of Verda means Warriors of the Shadow, a name the Tongs took for themselves during their legendary war with our battalions of Gel. Taking the victory and the cloud of volcanic ash as a sign of divine favor, the Tong adopted the name Da Word of Verda. It was a terrible day for our forces. I knew it would happen, and I could technically stop them by force. But it was considered heretic to use the force, and those who could, would be killed. I could of course stop that from happening, as I was far more powerful than they could imagine, but we Gel were very stubborn. Like the descendants, the humans after us, the Gel were very stubborn and afraid when it concerned supernatural, and they would stop at nothing to kill or contain the threat. And since I didn't want to cause the gel, and later on the human race to go extinct for no reason, I didn't use the force back then and let things happen. It was a hard couple of years during that time, but I used this chance to rise to power and took control over the forces. I created some order and led the gel into battle against the Tong. We clashed a few times after that, and I am proud to say that I never used the force in a precognitive way. I trained my strategy capabilities and leadership. I sent out scouts to get a feel for the lands, and two, created traps and plans to win the war. And we did win. In the final battle, called the Freeing of Notron, 
we managed to defeat the Tong in a decisive battle. The last remaining Tong decided to flee the planet to the planet Rune. This marked the end of the war between the Zhel and the Tong, many years before it was supposed to end in the original timeline. This was my first ever war which I participated in and took active charge to fight someone. The Rakata didn't count as they didn't even last for one minute before they were yeeted back where they came from. I then decided to leave the planet of Notron and finally create my own planet. I had planned to do this a long time ago and I had everything ready to go through with it. But first, I planned to create a structure which would help me create my own planet. I called the structure the PBC or the planet's birth chamber. It wasn't a chamber, not even close, but that didn't matter to me. To create this, I first decided on a big planet to begin the creation of this megastructure. And when I mean megastructure, I mean that it is planet-sized. I had great plans for this later on, but for now, it would only help me create my own planet. Did I take an extra step to create my planet, which wasn't necessary? Yes, I did, but it was just so much more enjoyable for me and I could use the PBC for other things later on as well. I found a planet, and similar to the way I had created the Explorer all those years ago, I began the production and assembly of the PBC. But there were differences to the Explorer. First of all, the PBC would be so much larger. It would be so large, in fact, that it could create a planet inside of it. I say inside, but it is not exactly inside. Let me explain. The PBC would be made up of four parts three rings of different sizes that would span around the planet and weigh, ere the planet would be created inside of, and one central piece that connected the three rings and where the controls and all other things I would need and want be located. Picture 2. I was in my meditative state during most of the creation of the different parts of the PBC. I created 37 different pieces, which I would then place on different places on the planet and wait for them to be used to finish the final four pieces of the PBC. The difficulty of doing this was harder than when I created the Explorer and assembled it into one spaceship. To give a comparison, creating the Explorer would be like creating a paper plane compared to creating a house. This process took centuries and millennia for me to finish the 37 different pieces. It took me 1,704 years to finish all of them. This might not make sense, since it was that much bigger than the Explorer, and yet it only took not even two times the time. But the reason for this was my growing power in the Force. There lay nearly one million years between the creation and assembly of the Explorer and the creation of the PBC. I was now capable of placing the different pieces I created all over the planet. I had reached the level of moving planets, finally. It was a big step. Looking back at it now, but that was only the level of my telekinesis and not all I could using the Force. The Force had taught me so many things over the years, and using some of the meta-knowledge I had, I tried to create some of my own uses. I came to understand that the Force was basically everything you could imagine. So if you manipulate this power, this Force, you could achieve anything. I didn't do that, though. Conquering planets and the like was not something I was interested in. I had long given up such ambitions, not that I ever had any, to begin with, but I did think about creating an empire. I decided to create an order instead, the Jedi Order. But we are getting off topic. After I had created the 37 different pieces, I took to space. I rose higher and higher in the air until I left the planet's atmosphere. I carried all the pieces with me and then began to assemble the pieces into the four parts while I was in space. It took a while, but I had finally created the PBC. This was the hardest task slash creation I had ever done up to that point. But when I was looking at the white and gray megastructure, I was happy. My trusty companion, Sky, was with me through the entire process. He would fly along the PBC and look for any damage or mistakes that I had made. Our minds were connected, and so I could see what he saw and vice versa. But I didn't make any mistakes. The planet birth chamber had been completed. I was enormously of hap about that and wanted to go over to step two right awav. Fly along the PBC and look for any damage or mistakes that I had made. Our minds were connected and so I could see what he saw and vice versa. But I didn't make any mistakes. The planet birth chamber had been completed. I was enormously happy about that and wanted to go over to step two right away. 
the birth of a new planet, my own planet. New chapter is coming soon, at Writer Review, weekly power status. See who voted 200 plus I, 6, 920%. You may also like more Surrounded the Blind, La X Exposa Privacy and Cookie Settings, XX Seductive Doll by Maine, Swordsman, Embarazada, Fantasy, Urban Realistic, Urban Managed by Google, Complies with ABTCF, CMPID 300, JEDPI 008, P48, Yoke 48, OIAIO 4.6, PODOC 3.8, OIAIO 4.6,